Welcome to Linux Mint. In this video, I will show you 10 to do's you have to do after a fresh installation of Linux Mint. So let's start. The first point is the welcome screen. Here we can disable the automatic showing at startup and under first steps, you can define, for example, your favorite desktop color. For example, in my case, it is blue, perfect. After that, we can choose our panel layout. Should it be traditional or modern? I personally go with modern. The traditional one is like Windows XP. And yeah, let us come to point two system snapshots. Let us configure them. Now we can open this in the welcome screen or in our menu, it is called time shift. Then we have to authenticate us with our password. And at first, time shift asks us for the snapshot type. In our case, this would be, I guess, every time rsync. So let us click next. Now our system size will be estimated. That takes a moment. In the time we can close the welcome screen, we won't need it anymore. And after that, we can select a snapshot location, choose a partition with much disk space, and if you have a HDD installed on your system, choose this one. But in my case, yeah, we don't have so many options, so this is okay. And I click next. Now I recommend you to uncheck everything and only check monthly to two. So Linux Mint is doing a snapshot every month and you can go back a maximum of two months. That's in my case completely enough and then say next because yeah, we only need these snapshots when we want to rescue our system. And if you want more snapshots, because for example, you are changing something, you can also do some manual snapshots too. So that's okay. And now let us come to our home directories. I will leave them as a default. We don't want to save our personal files with the snapshot tool. And in the end, I can click finish and time shift is configured. Perfect. Let us close it. Now let us configure our system update manager. So I click down here on the shield and yeah, here we see welcome to the update manager. Perfect. Let us say, okay. And at the first point, it asks you if you want to watch to a local mirror, I click in my case, yes, we have to authenticate us. And here we could select another mirrors. In my case, I'm living in Germany. So yeah, <laughs> I'm taking German mirrors. Perfect. I click apply. And in the end, I can click OK to update my cache. And now we can close our software sources. And here we can see an update of our update manager. So I click apply the update. Let us type in our password. Perfect. And the software is installing. Perfect. Now we have many updates since the release of Linux Mint. On the one hand, you can install updates manually, for example, every week. For that, you only have to hit install updates. Here you can click OK and yeah, just do it. Or you could also go to edit preferences here and in the automation tab, you could activate every four automatic preferences for updates for Linux Mint, Cinnamon, Flatpaks, and also the removing of obsolete kernels and dependencies. I'm recommending every four of them. And now you don't have to take care anymore of any updates because the update manager is handling now itself and we can close it. So the next step is to install additional drivers. For that, we have to use a completely updated system. So in this case, I am installing once all updates to keep my system to ensure that I'm using a up-to-date system for my additional drivers. So I select install updates, click on OK. Now I have to authenticate me and it is downloading and installing. 
Okay, perfect. My updates are now finished and then here is standing reboot required. So yeah, let us do this. I close the update manager and quit our system and select restart. Perfect, now we are back and then let us come to our additional drivers. I'm heading to our menu and typing in driver and here we see our driver manager. I open it up, I authenticate it and perfect. Now it is looking for hardware drivers. This could be for example Nvidia drivers, printer drivers will be handled later in the printer menu. This one is only looking for graphic drivers or sound card drivers or something else. In my case, our computer does not need any additional drivers because the most drivers come with the Linux kernel included. Here we could only install some additional ones. And in my case, my system does not need anything. That's great. Otherwise, just select the recommended option and click install. It is very easy. So that is our point additional drivers. Let us come to our firewall. I open up our menu and open up the firewall conf configuration. I'm typing in my password and here we are. We can easily turn our firewall on by clicking this option here. Now our, our firewall is on and here in the tab rules we could define some rules under the plus here for example, we can allow a application such as SSH or RDP or Minecraft, something else. But uh, in this case, I won't need any firewall rule and you only need the firewall if you are not behind a router. So if you are on a laptop and you are locked in in public Wi-Fi hotspots, for example, in a cafe, or at the train station, then yeah, you probably will need the firewall. But if you are only sitting behind a router and there are only trusted devices in your local network, then you don't need this firewall. So perfect. In my case, I am behind a router, so I'm deactivating my firewall because my router at my home has also a integrated firewall which is blocking all requests from the outside. Perfect. Let us come to install useful applications. I am open up the software manager and here I recommend you the app FlatSeal. FlatSeal is a program with which you can manage Flatpak permissions. For that we yeah, have to install something. I click on continue and FlatSeal is doing this. If you installed some flat packs, like for example, Google Chrome, here we have it. You could see the permissions of the app and disable or enable some features of that. For our example, I will install Google Chrome to show that to you. You don't have to install Google Chrome. Okay, my applications are now all installed. I can close the software manager and let us head over to flat seal, which we can find here. And here we can see all applications installed with Flatpak. And here we can see our installed Google Chrome. And down here in file system, we could allow all system files that Google Chrome, so that Google Chrome has the right to, for example, save or open or upload any files from your USB sticks or other partitions, for example. You don't have to do that, but here is the option where you can find it for every application. So yeah, that is the file system right, which could be helpful sometimes. Okay, so now let us head over to our startup application applications manager. I open up our menu and search for startup applications. Here we can see all startup application. Here we can see all startup applications which are started every time our Linux Mint starts. If you don't want to use Bluetooth, you can disable that here. If you don't want to open the Mint welcome screen anymore, just disable it. Print queue applet is helpful if you don't have any printer, disable it. 
SSH key agent is quite handy if you are dealing with servers. And here, if you have an NVIDIA card installed, then the NVIDIA Prime applet is great. Otherwise, you can disable it. System reports is very helpful. The update manager, I also recommend to leave that on. Here in my case, a VMware user agent. I don't have any VMware. And here we see an X app SN watcher that is important for Linux Mint. Yeah, also if you want to start an application at every boot of the system, you can choose a application here. For example, you could choose your calendar and add that application. But in my case, I don't want to do this. So now we have configured our startup applications. Let us come to a very handy feature of Linux Mint. Just open up some windows, for example, Firefox and our file manager. And let us open the settings for hot corners. And here I personally define in the left upper corner the function show all windows. So when I had my mouse into that corner, all applications which are currently open show up and I can select between them or I could also close applications by clicking on that X or just by clicking the middle mouse button which is on your mouse wheel. And here I can also close some applications or of course select one to work with. That feature is very handy. I'm using it all the time. So. Yeah, let us head over to our sound settings at our next point. And sometimes you hear some very weird sounds. For example, if you put your window to the left side, that is very ugly, the sound. And yeah, we can disable all of these sounds by just disabling everything in the sound tabs here. And now our system does not make any sounds anymore. I like that very much. But of course, you could also define your own sounds. But in my case, I don't want to do this. So I can close the sound settings and we never hear anything from Linux Mint anymore. I like that. In the next point and our last official to do, we could connect some online accounts with our Linux Mint. I open up online accounts and here we can connect Google or Nextcloud to it. The Microsoft point is here not very well supported. So yeah, choose Google or Nextcloud. In my case, I'm going with Nextcloud, open up our Nextcloud and typing in here my server address for my Nextcloud, head in with a username, type in my password and click connect. Perfect. That worked very well. I can close my Nextcloud account settings and here we can see which should be available and I want to use that every time. So I click on X and here on the X. And now in my calendar, if I open that one up, all my, all my calendar entries show up. In my case, this is a demo account and I only have a meeting with Max. Or next week on Wednesday, I have another meeting with Max. And I click add, perfect. At the default, two calendars are activated, the personal and the other personal. In this case, I see the difference because one of them is German, which is obviously my next cloud. But in your case, it won't. So for that, let us click to manage calendars and here we see which one is from our computer and which is from our next cloud. I personally recommend you to disable the one of your computer and here we now only have enabled our Google or Nextcloud calendars. And perfect. Now you can use your calendar. You also will get some notifications. And here on the right down corner, you can also see all events. If we head over to the 12th of October, here my meeting with Max show up. Perfect. These were 10 to do's for Linux Mint. And let us come to another to do which is very easy, but I like it very much. Let us change our desktop background. I right click the desktop and say change desktop background. And here we can select the name of 
our current distribution. In my case, it is Vanessa. And here we can enable some very nice backgrounds. For example, Singapore looks very nice. Or I like Frozen very much at this time. But of course, you can also add your own folders for your own backgrounds. In my case, this is OK. I close this one. And now we have a beautiful desktop just right to start to get very productive. That was it for today. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and write a comment about what you every time do when you set up your Linux Mint desktop. Thanks for watching. Bye.